in order to help you segue into this, okay, I'm going to try and talk really fast. You guys are doing really well um, following so far. We know how to graph lots of things. Um, we know how to graph straight lines. I alluded to that a little while ago. We now know how to graph parabolas. There are a couple other shapes, right, that you also, uh, I'll just say lines, that you also know how to graph. What other kinds of shapes do you know how to graph on a Cartesian plane? Any takers? Circles. Circles. Circles, thank you. Hyperbola. Very good. Circles, hyperbolas. Okay. Uh, there is one more, which I'm just going to leave off for a second, uh, which is exponentials. And you'll see why I've left it off in a minute. Let's just quickly remember what, like, as equations, what these roughly look like, okay? Now, the equation of a line, that'll be something like y equals mx plus b. We've seen those before. Uh, parabolas, we just looked at those. Circles. What might be the, an example of the equation of a circle? Um, I'll give you a clue. It will start with an x, usually. x squared plus b squared is equal to o squared. Okay, very, very close. I'm going to put in a y in there. I need y's in there somewhere to make it an equation. Um, a circle, anyway. And um, over here, on the right-hand side, I'm going to put r squared. It's r because in a circle, the most important feature probably is the radius. radius. Thank you very much, right? So for instance, if I had x squared plus y squared equals 25, okay? That's going to be a circle with its center at the origin and its radius is going to be, well, 25 is 5 squared, right? So the radius would be just 5. Radius isn't 25, it's 5 squared, okay? So that's a circle. What's a hyperbola look like? Uh, the equation, I mean. Minus a by k. Uh, oh yeah, okay. That's that's one way of writing it. A more common way of writing it, at least what we've seen in this course, looks like this. Y equals one over x. Okay. Now, here's the reason why I've picked out uh, these four. Okay. When we try and find out where these collide with each other. Okay. The pictures that you get are kind of interesting. And on the right hand side here, I'd like you to draw a, a few very small pictures with me. Okay. So. I've already got a parabola, so I'm going to cheat a little bit and use that one. Draw with me a simple circle and a simple hyperbola. I'll show you what they look like. Okay? So, um, let's just draw a simple circle, maybe say the unit circle. Okay, I'm not actually, as you'll see, I'm going to need any markings for the numbers. And a hyperbola, if you can't remember what that looks like. A standard hyperbola like the one that I've just written there has this kind of weirdo looking shape. I've got some dotted lines on there. Does anyone know what they're called? It starts with an A. Axes. They are axes, which is coincidental and not what I meant. They also, the dotted lines I mean, um, are asymptotes, which is why they're dotted. Um, what do asymptotes mean in this case? They are imaginary lines. They're not actually part of the graph, but they do tell us where the graph goes, right? I can get closer and closer and closer to the asymptote, but I can't actually get there. And the same thing over here, okay? So, yes? Yeah, yeah. So, so for all of these, I could write them just like for a straight line. I could write all of them in all kinds of different formats, right? Uh, we call them forms, in fact. So, um, so they all give you different features, which is why you have them. Uh, I studied the, the uh, two point. Uh, two point formula. Yeah. Take a vert vertex. Yes, that's right. There's a whole variety. There's a whole variety, but. The forms are not so important to what we're going to look at at the moment, which is why I'm not highlighting them. Okay, I don't want you to get confused with different positions. Okay, now, I've got a parabola here, I've got a circle there, I've got a hyperbola here. What I'm interested in is, where do these graphs intersect if I put another straight line on the picture? I put another straight line on the picture. Let's start with that parabola over here. Now, if I put a straight line in like, say, this, Here's a straight line. I have no idea what its equation is, but that doesn't matter. How many times does it intersect? Twice. It intersects twice, right? You can see them there. One, two, okay? I could draw a whole bunch of lines that intersect with it twice. I could also draw a line that intersects with it once. Could you give me an example? Could you describe verbally? Where could I put a line so it would just intersect once? I could put one through the vertex. I could go bang, straight across, right? Um, I could draw like one vertically. I'll just I'll draw one like this. 
If that's vertical, for sure it's only ever going to hit once. Or, like you said, I can draw one through there. Okay. I can also very easily draw a line that never intersects with the parabola, right? Where could I draw one of those? Outside the Yeah, I could draw it underneath, like, like somewhere over here. Okay. These guys are never going to hit, right? Two points. One point. Zero points. Can you draw a straight line that hits at three points? Hmm. Is it possible? You think about it. You can uh, put a ruler on top of that parabola that you um, that you drew, and you can think, okay, where where can I possibly move this thing? Can I come up with a line, any of these lines, that hits three times? Yeah. And as it happens, if you're drawing a straight line, you can't. Okay. If you want it to hit more times, it's going to, need to wiggle around or curve. Okay. So being that, I've got a maximum of two points. I can find these points of intersection by using a quadratic. Okay, now that's, that's not surprising because this parabola is a quadratic. But I want you to take that idea now and think about these two shapes, the circle and the hyperbola. Okay? I can draw a line that intersects with my circle two times, can't I? I can just draw one like this. Can you tell me where I could draw a line that would intersect with it once? Where would you like it? I could do one uh, like across the bottom here. <coughs> called a tangent, right? and just as easily I can draw a line that never intersects with the circle. Right? Let's put this line around here. Okay? Can you draw a line that intersects with the circle three times? No, you can't, unless, like I said, it like wiggles around and curves. Okay? Now, you don't need me, <laughs> this is predictable, right? When you look at this hyperbola, I can do this again, can't I? Right? I can draw a line like this, hits twice. I can draw a line like this, well, that's a bad example. It's going to hit twice as well. I could draw a line like that, which hits once. And I could draw a line. Where would I draw a line so it doesn't hit? Anywhere inside of the unit circle. Uh, wait, hold on. I'm down here. Down here. I'm Anywhere outside of that. Okay, well, now it's tricky. As it happens, because this shape is like kind of like this one, but inside out, right? So actually, outside is not where I want to go. I want to go inside. I want to go somewhere down the middle, okay? Because I've got this same arrangement here, just like here, I can solve these points of intersection in exactly the same way. Now that's a little more surprising, right? Because this is not a quadratic, and neither is this. But when I solve them, I will get a quadratic, okay? So, we just have enough time for us to run through some really, really brief examples, okay? So, would you please write down, let's try it into play. Uh, would you write down this pair of equations? Y equals x plus 2. Y equals x plus 2. And x squared plus y squared equals 4. Okay? Now, as it happens, conveniently, um, this pretend circle that I drew, just drew over here, drew it at random, this is actually not that bad a representation of x squared plus y squared equals 4. Remember, uh, it's a, an r squared on the end, so what's the radius of this circle? Two. It's going to be 2, is it? it's the square root of that number. Okay, so I'm going to put it 2 here, a 2 here, uh, a minus 2, and a minus 2. Okay. So, uh, uh, I just need to fix this a little bit. When I draw this line, y equals x plus 2, the straight line, okay, what do straight lines look like? You can tell me, because you told me 20 minutes ago, what's the y-intercept of this line? 2. I'm pointing at it, aren't I? It's 2. It's just that number, okay? So it's up here. Doesn't take that much to work out that the x-intercept will be negative 2. It'll be over here. So here's the line I want. You can see it hits twice. Where does it hit? What are the coordinates of those points? We're going to find them, okay? Now here's the key idea. To find points of intersection, um, solve these two equations, right? Because they're happening at the same time, we call these, you've met these before, starts with an S, things that happen at the same time. Simultaneous. Simultaneous, thank you very much. Solve simultaneously, solve these two at the same time by substitution. Is that enough S's for you? Solve simultaneously by substitution, okay? Here's the way it works. We take this straight line, y equals x plus 2. And I'm going to substitute x plus 2 everywhere I see y in the second equation. Are you okay with that? That's, that's my substitution step. Okay. 
So I'm going to write this. x squared plus, instead of y squared, what should I write? Plus two. x plus 2 squared. Right? So there is my substitution. Okay? It equals 4. I substituted, now I solve. Okay, let's have a look at this guy in here. I've got x squared plus, can you expand that um, factorized term there? x squared plus 4x plus 4 equals 4. What happens? How did I get that? Do you remember how I got that? <coughs> to get the 4x, I double this and multiply by that. And then to get this, I square this as a coincidence with 2. When you double it, it's the same as squaring because it's 2. Okay. So now what do I do with this thing? What kind of steps could I take? Any suggestions? I can, what would you like me to move to the other side? The 4, okay. So I've got a 4 here and a 4 here. Moving it to the other side would mean it disappears from both of them, right? Because you're subtracting 4. I'm going to therefore, I'm not going to write it because it's disappeared, right? I, I'll get 0 on this right hand side. What else can I do? I can collect those like terms, can't I? I've got two of them, right? So I'm going to write 2x squared. What's left over? What's the term I haven't done anything with? It's just 4x is just hanging out there. Now what? I can factorize, I will factorize in a second, but there's one thing I can do to make it easier for me before I factorize. I can simplify this because, can you see, all the numbers on the front, those coefficients there, that's what we call those numbers on the front, they're all even. Do you notice that? So I can divide all of them by two, which leaves me with this, which is just marginally simpler. Okay, now I'm gonna factorize. What can I take out? I can take out an x. That leaves me with x plus 2 in the middle. Okay, I've factorized, now I can solve. x equals 2 values, what are they? What do I get from this one? It's just 0. And what do I get from this one? <coughs> Careful, I want, I want this to be 0 or I want this to be 0. I've done this one, to make the 0 I need a negative, don't I? Okay. Or negative 2, watch for that. Okay. Now does that make sense? Yeah, it totally makes sense because these values are the ones I was expecting, right? There's x equals 0 and there's x equals negative 2. Okay. As a last step, just before you leave, I've found x values, but what do I need for a point? A point. A point has two values, I need a y, don't I? Okay. So I'm going to say if x equals 0, let's chuck it back in here, right? For this, what is y equal to? 2. If x equals negative 2, Chuck it back in here, what's y equal to? Negative 2 plus 2, 0. There you go. There's one of my points, 0, 2. And here's the other point, negative 2, 0. Okay. We'll pick up the rest of it on Tuesday.